element colon has and then child element in brackets. This is the has selector. Finally, it's possible to style an element in CSS based on the elements below it in the DOM. All right, well actually this has been possible for a few years, but up until recently, browser support for this selector was a bit lacking. But now, it's over 90% of all web browsers that you can do this in. So it's 100% worth you knowing about the has selector if you're doing any front-end web development today. So this is just a quick video so that you know how to use this feature of CSS, and then you can go out into the world and use this in your own web applications. So what is the has selector? To understand the has selector, it's important to first grasp the concept of a relational pseudoclass. In CSS, a pseudoclass is used to define a special state of an element. For instance, hover, that applies a style when a user hovers over an element with their mouse. Similarly, the has selector is a pseudoclass, but it's a relational one, which means that it bases its selection on a relationship. Specifically, it selects an element if it contains another element that matches a given selector. Let's consider a simple example here. Let's say you have a list of articles on a web page, each with an article tag. Some articles have images inside them and we want to highlight those articles. Without has, we might have needed to add a class to each article with an image or maybe use JavaScript to achieve the same effect. However, with the has selector, we can do it purely with CSS like this. So in this CSS, article has image selects any article element that contains an image element and it applies a blue border around those articles. Here is the result in the browser of this. Notice how the article tags that have an image inside them have the blue border around them and the other ones don't. This is a straightforward example, but it clearly demonstrates the power of the has selector for selecting elements based on their content. It's worth noting, however, that the has selector is not limited to direct children. So it can select an element based on the presence of a descendant at any level in the hierarchy. So in this second version, we've got an image tag here that's nestled deeply inside all of these divs. While the has selector can still find this and it will still apply the blue border to this article. It doesn't matter where in the hierarchy this image is basically. Another aspect to consider is the specificity of the has selector. That's the word specificity. In CSS, specificity determines which styles are applied when there is a conflict. The specificity of the has selector is higher than that of a simple selector like a class selector, but lower than an inline style. So this means that while has can be a powerful tool for styling, its rules can still be overridden by more specific selectors or more specific styles defined specifically on the element style attribute. One potential use case for the has selector is in designing responsive layouts. So consider a scenario where you have a grid layout with cards on it, and you want to apply a different style to cards that contain a certain element, like a video. So by using has, you can easily apply styles to those cards without altering your HTML structure or relying on any additional classes or any JavaScript. This can make your CSS more maintainable and your web page more dynamic. So here, notice those borders again on the cells that contain a video. And you can see that the has selector on the right hand side is being applied to those elements inside DevTools in Chrome. Here. So just a quick note on performance. While the has selector is a great tool to have, it's essential to use it wisely to avoid any performance issues. Has can increase the complexity of CSS selectors. So overusing it or applying it to a large and complex document can actually impact rendering times. It's recommended to use has selectively and to test the performance impact on your web pages, particularly on devices with limited processing power. There are several tools that can help you analyze and optimize the performance of your CSS. Chrome DevTools offers a whole comprehensive suite of debugging tools that are built directly into the Chrome browser. The performance tab of DevTools allows you to record and analyze how your web page loads and how it renders, including any time spent on calculations. This feature can help identify if and when has selected might be causing you slowdowns. Firefox developer tools also provides a performance panel just like Chrome, and then there's also third-party tools like Lighthouse. Lighthouse is an open source automated tool for improving the quality of web pages in general, and it can be run against any web page, whether it's public or it needs authentication. You can also set that up in Lighthouse. The performance audit that you get back from Lighthouse includes metrics on render blocking resources, and that can help you understand the impact of your CSS, including things like the has selector. Okay, lastly, just a quick note on browser support. I showed you this at the top of the video. This is that can I use page for the has selector. And as of time of making this video, which is April 2024, as you can see, has works on about 92% of web browsers in use globally. 
There's a couple of notes here at the bottom, as there often is, because this stuff is never binary, but ultimately, above 90% of browser usage is usually fine. Browser support is a business decision, not an engineering decision, because it affects how many users can use your app. But it's a conversation worth having with whoever your stakeholders are about whether this level of browser support is acceptable. In a nutshell, it's fair to say that the Has Selector is supported in the majority of modern browsers, and that includes the latest versions of Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. If you need to, you can use feature detection libraries like Modernizer to check if a user's browser supports Has. So based on that check, you can conditionally apply styles or load alternative style sheets that are designed for browsers without has support. Doing this kind of thing allows you for more tailored experiences, but it also requires additional development effort and additional testing. So whenever possible, design your CSS in a way that it degrades gracefully. For example, if you're using has to apply special styles to elements that contain some other element content, then just ensure that the default styling at least remains acceptable in browsers that don't support has, and that's a very easy way of just accepting like a, a general level of browser compatibility without going overboard. So that might mean like avoiding the use of has for critical layout decisions that could break your design in unsupported browsers entirely. So anyway, get out there and start using the has selector in your CSS today. But before you go, why not check out some of the other videos on my channel, like this one right here on your screen now. Until next time, my name's James Charlesworth, and this is Train to Code on YouTube.